last leg of our sermon series, On the Floor for More. Uh, how many of you received stuff out of this series from the Lord, On the Floor for More? I hope that changes your life forever. I hope it changes the way you pursue God and the approach that you have to the Father. Uh, because this is not just something we want to end today. We want this attitude to continue all our, all, our whole life long of seeking the Lord. And, and again, it's not necessarily a position. It's not about being on the floor. If you want to physically get on the floor in your house, that's fine. That's your own prerogative. But it's about the attitude of what happens when we seek God. And not just seeking what he can do for us, but actually seeking his presence, who he is, uh, and humbling ourselves at his feet. There's something amazing in that, and it's an attitude, okay? So we want to go in further into that. Now, the first sermon, if you weren't here, we started this four weeks ago. The first sermon we learned to be on the floor for more thanksgiving. We talked about the power of that. Our second sermon we learned to be on the floor for more healing. About how God can heal us no matter what we're doing. Uh, last week we learned to be on the floor for more revival. Yeah. Revival. Yeah. More life. More power. Yeah. Amen. And this week to wrap it up we're going to learn how to be on the floor for more freedom. Yeah. For more freedom. And, and I promise you we're going to read a story today that I, you'll probably see a side of this that you never saw before. Uh, at least I've never seen it before. I've preached on this message, on this title, uh, or this grouping of scriptures, I should say, many, many times. But God showed me something totally different that I, I'm excited to share about with you this morning because I, I believe it can change the way you experience God. It can change the way you experience God and enhance the way you experience God. <laughs> So, with that being said, let's dig right into the Word. Luke chapter 7, verse 37 through 50. Now, that's a big chunk of Scripture, so you're just going to hear me read for a little while. It's on the PowerPoint if you don't have your Bible with you. Luke chapter 7, verse 37 is where I'm going to start. This is what the Bible says. It says, And behold, a woman in the city, which was a sinner, when she knew that Jesus sat at me in the Pharisee's house, brought an alabaster box of ointment, and stood at his feet behind him weeping, and began to wash his feet with tears, and to wipe them with the hairs of her head, and kissed his feet, and anointed them with the ointment. Now when the Pharisees which had by, uh, bidden him saw it, he spake within himself, saying, This man, if he were a prophet, would have known who and what manner of woman this is that touches him, for she is a sinner. And Jesus answered and said unto him, Simon, I have somewhat to say unto thee. And he said, Master, say on. There was a certain creditor which had two debtors, the one owed 500 pence and the other 50. And when they had nothing to pay, he frankly forgave them both. Tell me, therefore, which of them will love him most? Simon answered and said, I suppose that he to whom he forgave most. And he said unto him, Thou hast rightly judged. And he turned to the woman and said unto Simon, Seest this woman? I entered into thy house, thou gavest me no water for my feet. But she hath washed my feet with her tears and wiped them with the hairs of her head. Thou gavest me no kiss, but this woman since the time I came in hath not ceased to kiss my feet. My head with oil thou didst not anoint, but this woman hath anointed my feet with ointment. Wherefore I say unto thee, her sins, which are many, are forgiven, for she loved much. But to whom little is forgiven, the same loveth little. And he said unto her, thy sins are forgiven. And they that sat at meat with him began to say within themselves, who is this that forgiveth sins also? And he said unto the woman, Thy faith hath saved thee. Go and go in peace. Amen. Everybody needs more freedom. Everybody. It doesn't matter who you are or where you're going. Everybody needs more freedom in your life. And you may say, Pastor, I've never heard this message linked with freedom before. I haven't either. This is why I'm excited to show it to you. And really show you what can happen at the Master's feet and when we're on the floor for more. This woman is a, a renowned story. Matter of fact, in another gospel, Jesus talks about this experience and says this woman, what she did this day will be remembered in everywhere the gospel is preached. This woman will come up because of how moving it was and how touching it was for the Lord of the alabaster box. How many of you are familiar with the alabaster box story? You've heard it before today. Okay, so 
Many of you have. If you haven't, that's okay. This woman in alabaster box was something that was very precious. You had to break it open in order to get the things out of it. Uh, you usually bought it filled with very ornaments and spices and, and, and spikenard and all these different things that were, they would put in it. And it made everything smell real good. But it was precious and it cost a lot of money to actually have it. But I don't want to focus on the box this morning. I know a lot of times when we, we talk about the story, we talk about the box and what was broken up. I want to focus on the woman. Because what the Bible says about this woman is amazing. It says that she was a sinner. That's why the Pharisees are like, man, this woman is a sinner. And if this dude knew who he was at his feet, he would certainly say, get away from me, woman. You know, I don't want your sin cooties on me. I guess that's the way they, they looked at it back then. But, but, but Jesus understood she was a sinner. Yeah. Jesus understood that she was a sinner, but he still allowed her to do what she was doing because there's power in what she was doing. Right. There's, there's an experience to be had there that this woman was experiencing something that you and I can experience this very day if we'll get to the feet of Jesus. I promise you that we can. Yeah. I want to skip down in the story to verse 44, and that's where we're going to get the meat of our message from because he begins to talk to Simon. Simon was thinking in his head, he didn't have the boldness to say it out loud, but he was thinking in his head, like, this woman should not be here, she should not be, if he was a good man of God, he would tell her to leave. That's what he was thinking, of course, the Lord is God Almighty, he knows what you're thinking. Amen, Amen. Right. that's a whole other message in himself, but he knows what you're thinking. Yeah. So he begins to address the problem, and he says, Simon, I got a question for you. Simon's like, well, sure, Lord, what's the question? He says, tell me, if two people owe a bunch of money, and one owes a ton of money, and one owes a little bit of money, and, and I forgive them both, the creditor forgives them both, which one is the most grateful? And of course, he answered, said, well, the one who forgave the most. And he said, sure. But then he begins to tell Simon something about this woman that he's got a problem with. And he begins to say it like this. And he turned to Simon, returned to the woman, and said unto Simon, so, so understand, Jesus is addressing the woman. He says he turned to the woman, so he's actually acknowledging her, but he's talking to Simon. He says, seest thou this woman? Take a look at her. Look at what she's doing. I entered thy house, and, they, and thou gave me no water for my feet. But she had washed my feet with her tears and wiped them with the hairs of her head. Yes, amen. At this woman doing this, at this woman doing this, this wasn't just about praise. This was about her finding the place, her Redeemer, and emptying herself of every scar, every wound, every pain, every regret, every mistake, everything she'd ever done. She finally found a place where she can go and have the freedom to pour it out liberally and not have condemnation and not have judgment and not have a righteous glare. She finally found a place where she could go and really show the Lord who she really is and what she'd really done. Yes. Amen. Amen. This was such an amazing thing to this day because remember, when well, they're in a Pharisee's house, if she were to try to do this with a Pharisee, they would have condemned her, maybe even stoned her for what she'd been through or what she'd had. They already, she already had a reputation, so they weren't going to help her. But this person came with so much problems and so much issues. At Jesus' feet, we can completely empty ourselves. Yes. Yes. All our struggles, pains, hurt, disappointments, regrets, brokenness, you can empty yourself of that at Jesus' feet. And here's the news flash. Don't get all righteous on me. Everybody's got this stuff. Everybody struggles. Everybody's got heartache. Everybody has brokenness. Everybody has pain. Everybody has regret. All these things happen. Have guilt. Have things we're ashamed of. The part of us that nobody knows. That part of us that nobody sees. That wound that we hide from other people. That scar that we don't ever want to talk about because it's too deep and it's too fresh of a wound to bring up. And we've hidden it for years. The great thing about being at Jesus' feet is there's freedom to come and say, God, this is what I'm dealing with. This is what it is. I need help. Amen. Then that'll set you free. Amen. How many of you have ever found, found a private place to cry? Because you don't want anybody else to see you broken. Amen. Amen. Right. A private place. Somewhere we don't. And see, that's human nature. That's in our flesh. Right. Our flesh doesn't want to show everybody how wounded we are. Right. Our flesh doesn't want to show everybody how, how, how 
how hurtful the pain is and how broken we are. So we do it. We cry in the shower. We cry in our closet. We cry in our car on the way to work. We don't want anybody to see how really hurt and broken we are. Here's the good news this morning. There's a place you can go and you can pour it all out. It's at the feet of Jesus and he won't condemn you. He won't judge you. He won't think less of you. As a matter of fact, it will make his day. He will say, this is what I've been waiting for. I came into this place. Jesus said, Simon, I came into this place and you did not wash my feet, which was custom. You should have washed the guest's feet. But he said, you didn't even wash my feet. But this woman has washed my feet with tears. Let me tell you something. It takes time to wash feet with tears. Go home and wash your feet. And see how much water you use. <laughs> Pour it out and see how much it's going to take. It wasn't a drop or two. It wasn't a little... Hum, 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 I'm sorry. And no. When Jesus said she washed my feet with her tears, this was pain coming from a very deep place. And this woman, to do what she did, man, she was so brave. The fact that she was surrounded by all these righteous people, that she was surrounded by all these, you know, high up people in the church, because they were the ones that always hung out with Jesus, because they wanted to ridicule him and teach him and, and mess him up. To go in the middle of this person's house and say, I don't care. I don't care what's happened. I'm broken inside and I've got to have a place to let it go. I, I can't hide it no more. I can't hide it and cry by myself anymore. i got to take this pain somewhere. That brought up so much emotion. That brought up so much tears and so much crying that the tears had enough moisture to wash a man's feet. Yes. Amen. Man, that's freedom in itself. everybody here crying this morning. That's not what I'm trying to do. But I'm trying to tell you there is a place you can go. And it's at the feet of Jesus. You don't have to be as strong as you think you are. You don't have to. Who are you holding that facade up for? It's not pastor. I know everyone is weak. I'm weak. We're all weak. Right. Amen. Amen. Yes. I don't care how long you've been saved. I don't care if you've been the Holy Three. Saved, sanctified, filled with the Holy Ghost. Church of God rolls since 1920. I didn't matter to me. You're all weak. We're all weak. We're all in weak and weakness and need of a Savior. And we all have brokenness. And we all have times of trial. And we all have missteps and mistakes. We all have shortcomings that bother us and hinder us. You do not have to carry that your whole life long and pretend to be something you're not. You can go to Jesus' feet and with freedom, let it all out. Let it come from a deep place to where you're, when you get up, you're all cried out. Amen. Amen. That's a good place to be. Don't rush. Jesus will wait. Don't rush through it. Jesus will wait. A lot of times we think the Lord is so busy that he won't just let me sit and cry on him for a while. That he gets irritated with it. I'm tired of your crying. I want some worship. Tell me how good I am. That's not the mind of Christ. That's not the mind of Christ at all. Jesus will sit there and wait till you cry out every last tear. Till you can't cry no more. Until you've got every bit of brokenness out. I've, I've poured myself out so many times to him that I lose words. I don't know even what is wrong, but I know something's wrong. I can't say it, God. I feel it. I feel there's something wrong. There's something wrong. There's something off. There's something wrong with the way I walk and talk, my mind. There's something off about me, God. And I don't even know how to define it, God. But I'm here at your feet, and I'm just going to cry out until you hear my cry. Yes. Yes. Jesus will wait. Don't rush through it, man. We want to rush through everything. Right. I just started some of you already good looking at the clock. <laughs> <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Don't rush it. No. Man. Let those tears fall. And if you're not a crier, I'm not telling you you've got to cry. Uh, it's tears because she's using tears. But whatever it is, whatever the emotional turmoil is. Pour it out of his feet and don't stop Amen. until you get it all out. Amen. Don't do 99% and hold on to one because no. that one will grow by the time you get back. Get it all out. Yes. 
Till when you stand up, you can say, I have put all my burdens at his feet. I have cast all my shortcomings. And I stand in victory because he's the one who raised me up at the end of it all. Amen. That's freedom. That's freedom. Some of you are trying to convince God that you're good. He knows you're not. And I'm trying to badmouth this. The Bible says there's not one that does good. There's not one that's righteous. Not one. So I'm not trying to dog you. I'm not telling you you're not saved. I'm just saying that we all have issues. But we walk around wounded. And we don't have freedom to actually let them go because we're afraid of what someone might say. The good thing is you don't have to tell Pastor nothing. You ain't got to come to me and tell me all your woes. You don't have to tell me everything you've done wrong. You can bypass me all together yeah. and say, I don't need to go to pastor or nobody. I'll go straight to the throne. Yeah. I'll go straight to the creator. I'll go straight to the one who made me. And I'll lay it down there. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. And I encourage you to do so. Yes. So it takes time. Let's keep going. Yeah. Luke 7, 45. He goes on. He says, son, thou gavest me no kiss. But this woman, since the time I came in, hath not ceased to kiss my feet. You can give me a kiss. The Bible says you should greet brethren with a holy kiss. Amen. I'm not saying we need to adapt it here. I'm just saying. The Bible says. No offense. The Bible also says give no place to the devil. And some people would run with that too far. We'll do a holy handshake. Right hand fellowship. Amen. Amen. Give a sermon. At Jesus' feet, we can release our full adoration. Yes. No more holding back. Full adoration. You say, what do you mean? I mean to tell you this morning. And, I, and I'm not saying, I'm not judging. I'm just willing to, to venture out in faith and believe. When we were here and we were singing and we are praising, some of you wanted to get louder than you did. Some of you wanted to sing more than you wanted to. Some of you wanted to get more involved. You wanted to raise your hand. You wanted to do more, but you held back. Because you're like, well, I don't want them to get mad. I'm not a good singer. I don't want them to hear me. I don't want to get out of place. I just want to get here. Or maybe your heart wasn't in it at all. I'm telling you, there's a place at Jesus' feet where you can give your best adoration, unrestricted, uninhibited, to where you can say, I love you so much that I don't care why we can look at it. I'm kissing this guy's feet in the middle of this room full of judging people, but I don't got, I've got to praise him. I've got to thank him. I've got to let him know that I love him. He's my redeemer. He's my savior. He's my Lord. Some of you, it's been a long time since you really gave all yourself into your worship and into your praise and into your adoration of Jesus. Amen. Yes. Amen. Yes. You, know, you know why? Because we've been waiting on the tune. We've been waiting on the words. We've been waiting on stuff that don't matter. What matters is your heart. Yes. When this woman came and she fell down at his feet, all of a sudden, the disciples didn't get up and start playing her favorite song. All right. Amen. What song does she like? Yeah, okay, we'll, we'll sing it. Because she really needs to worship right now. Amen. Amen. Y'all yeah, got quiet on right there. That's okay. Amen. 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 When you have adoration and love for somebody, you realize it's not about all the other stuff. Right. Amen. Amen. How many people have been here and you're married 20 years or longer? How many of you know now that Valentine's Day isn't always about the roses and the, and the, and the, and the chocolate and the heart-shaped right. junk and all the pink and frilly stuff? It's nice, but you know what? It's just another day for people who are in love. Right. 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 Amen. Amen. Amen? It should be. Now, that stuff matters when you're newlyweds and it's just there. And I'm going to surprise them with the flowers and the and whatever. You, we, you want to get in there because it's new and it's fresh and, and want to impress. But when you have a relationship for a while, it does. I don't need a day to look over at Heather and say, honey, I love you. I love you. I, I, I love you. I'm here. I don't need all that stuff to prove my love. Amen. 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 I don't have to write on Facebook every three days how wonderful my marriage is. <laughs> Hallelujah. When I see that, I'm thinking, who are you trying to convince, me or you? Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Give me something. Okay, let's go. <laughs> There's freedom at Jesus' feet to stop holding back. Amen. Stop holding back your best 
praise. Stop waiting for the, everything to align to give him your best praise. You know why you need to give him your best praise? Because you're alive right now. Because you've got breath in your body. You shouldn't hold back for a special service or a special song or a special moment. Every moment with the Lord is special. Every moment with him deserves our best praise, our best adoration to be able to say, I love you, God, with all my heart, even when we lose an hour of sleep. Even when we can't have to come to church and everything's about working against us, you deserve my best praise. Man, there's freedom at the feet of Jesus to just let loose and give him your best. And your best doesn't have to look like everybody else. I'm not telling you you got to be a shouter or a runner or a hopper or a skipper. I'm just saying you give your best. Amen. Whatever your best is. If you like to shout, then shout. If you like to clap, then clap. If you like to cry, then cry. Yeah. Whatever it is, yeah. you just give your best. Yeah. You give what you got to Him because you say, I'm not holding back another day, another hour, another moment. Yeah. I, he, you don't understand what He's done for me. You don't understand how far He brought me out of my personal hell. You don't know the demons He's run out of me. You don't understand where I've been and I ain't got time to mess around with a cutesy song or a cutesy thing. i got to give you my praise. I'm not going to be like Simon and say, well, they, if they knew what they've done all week, then they would just cast them right out of the church. Amen? Amen? Amen. Don't be a Simon. No. No. Don't be a Simon. Yes. If someone comes in and they say, I'm here to kiss the feet of Jesus today, yes. then let them do it. Yes. Just let them go to town. Let it, hey, anytime you want to shout, shout. Anytime you want to clap, clap. Anytime you want to come to the altar and pray, you go to the altar and pray. We don't have a schedule. We don't have a regiment. We are structured. But understand, God Almighty runs this thing. It is His house, and you are His children. And we have liberty where the Spirit of God is. Amen. There's freedom to give Him your best. Freedom. Amen. Freedom of praise. I'm telling you, once a few people get freedom, it breaks out like wildfire. Amen. It breaks out. Because all of a sudden you're not looking at who's looking at you. Amen. 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 I, I, got, I can preach on that more, but I'm going to move on. Luke chapter 7, verse 46. Jesus said, she washed my feet with her hair, or with her tears and dried them with her hair. She kissed my feet since I got here. And now it says this. My head with oil thou did not anoint. But this woman had anointed my feet with ointment. Yes. Say, what do you mean? How are we going to anoint Jesus? Well, I'm going to teach you something today. What anointment? Hmm. What anointing? If you had to base it at the base fact of what it means to be anointed of God. <sighs> at Jesus' feet we can enter into perfect unity with God. Perfect unity with God. Yes. Say, why? How do you come to that conclusion? Because in the Bible, when everything's are, we understand there's certain things. We understand that oil is, is talking about the anointing. We talk about different things like that. Listen to what Psalm 133 compares ointment to and anointment. Listen to this. He says ointments. What do we mean? Listen to Psalm 133, 133. It's the whole song. Behold how good and how pleasant it is for brethren to dwell together in unity. It is like, 
It says it is like, it's talking about that oil, that anointing, that unity that brethren have. It is like the precious ointment upon the head that ran down upon the beard, even Aaron's beard, that went down to the skirt of his garment. As the dew of Hermon, and as the dew that descended upon the mountains of Zion. For there the Lord commandeth the blessing, even life forevermore. Amen. So what do you get that, Pastor? When Jesus said that you didn't anoint me, you didn't come in. The anointing at a time of them coming in meant we are in agreement. We are together. We are unified together. You are not my enemy. There is nothing between us. You are for me and I am for you. That's what anointing is. Anointing, when you say I'm anointed of God, it's not some special magical powers that you get because you're anointed. When the Bible says you are anointed, it means you are united with God. His will, His purpose, His plan. And that can flow through you in every aspect of God's power. It means you are united with God. When you are anointed, that's why when David was anointed king, he was God's chosen man because God finally found somebody who he could agree with that David would do what God wanted him to do. They were united together. Which brings a whole new message. You can't be anointed and disagree with God at the same time. You can't be anointed and disagree with the word. You can say it all you want and you can rub yourself down with Wesson oil from head to toe if you want to and have every preacher in the state lay hands on you. That's not how the anointing comes. Anointing comes when your heart is in total unity with your Father and with the Lord and with the gospel and with the message. And when your hearts are one, anointing power flows. Anointing isn't something that rubs off on you. Anointing comes from the Father that looks down and says, Finally, he's on my page. Finally, she's on my page. Finally, she's going to do what I say. Finally, he's going to do what I say. There's nothing in between us. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. At Jesus' you can become united with him. Hallelujah. Because all burdens are rolled away. All sin and shame are rolled away. Amen. All insecurities gone. Finally, God can say, now get up because me and you are together again. Yes. Get up because we're on the same page again. And now go out there and do my work and do my will. Amen. 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 God wants you to be anointed. God wants to anoint you. But it has to come through unity. Unity with God alone. The problem is, people don't want to get so united with God because it changes their life. Because mm-hmm. right. I found out something amazing about God. You can't change Him. Right. You think somebody in your family's stubborn. You haven't seen stubborn until you meet God's stubborn. You see, God has something in His Word saying that I'm the God of yesterday, today, and forever. I change not. Amen. Meaning God isn't ever going to come around to your way of thinking. So just lay it down. Amen. Just stop it. Well, I think about harassing him enough, he'll see it my way. No, he won't. Amen. If I throw enough half scriptures at him, I think he'll see it my way. No, he won't. Amen. I'm preaching now. Amen. Well, if I show him this commentary I read that it's okay, then he'll change his mind. No, it won't. It may change your peers. It may change everybody around you. It may change your own heart and get a little bit of that guilt away and and kind of soften that blow a little bit. But when God says, I don't change, I'm the same yesterday, today, and forever. Old Testament, New Testament, before Testament, whatever's happening after New Testament, it's all God. He said, I'm the same. I don't change. And if you want to be anointed, then you got to get on my book. You got to play by my rules. You got to walk by my authority. And if you'll do that, anointing will flow. Amen. And you won't even realize it. Amen. Amen. If you've ever been a minister of the gospel, just talking in a conversation, God will spit something out of your mouth that you didn't plan to say. Amen. It just popped out. And then some people, somebody come up to you and say, man, man, what you said, that, that was straight from God. That's because I look at you and 
you and see, oh, they need a word. Oh, look, I, I see a little image. I see a little spark. There's a little fog around them. I give them a word. No, that's nonsense. When I'm in anointing with God, I'm in unity with God. And the Spirit of God will speak the things that He has seen and that He has heard. And He'll talk and testify of the Father. And wherever people need it, they will hear it. That's why I can't take credit for any of it. Amen. That's why I can't say, yeah, I'm really good. I'm good at what I do. <laughs> I'm the best. <laughs> no. I'm not. I can't take any credit for it. You know why? Because it's not me. Right. It's the Holy Ghost. It's the Amen. Spirit of God. It's the anointing Amen. of God Amen. that flows because I stay in unity with Him. Yes. Amen. Amen. If you want greater anointing in your life, get greater unity with God. Amen. Get great unity with His Word. Yeah. Get great unity. Yeah. You can't be unified with the Word of God if you don't read it. You can't be unified with God if you never talk to Him. Amen. Hallelujah. Yes. Man, I can preach on that too. But. Amen. Anointing don't come with a certificate because you passed the class. Well, what do you do? Third graders pass classes too. It don't mean they're anointed. Amen? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm getting mean, I guess. <laughs> All right. At Jesus' feet, we can get united. But also, listen, the latter part of that scripture of that I read to you, a song, you may have to go back one slide. Verse 3 says, As to do a permit, as to do that descended upon the mountain of Zion. Listen to what he says. For there the Lord commanded the blessing. How many of you want the Lord to command a blessing your way? Amen. 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 Right. Amen. Right. You want the Lord to command a blessing? Yes. Yeah. Stop trying to make him say it. Put yourself in a position where he wants to say it. All right. Hallelujah. All right. Let me say that again because I'll say you free. Stop trying to make him say it and put yourself in a position where he wants to say it. Amen. Yes. Amen. Amen. Oh, Lord, if you just speak it, if you just speak it into existence, if you just speak it, if you just speak it, if you just speak it. God, when you just say the word, God, I know you're doing it. If you just please do it, if you please do it, you know what works better? God, I'm going to get unified with you to where your mercy and your passion and your love for me, you want to command a blessing. Why? Because we're in unity together. Yes. That's revelation. Yes. Yes. Why? God wants to bless you. Amen. He's not holding back from you. He wants to pour out blessings that will blow your mind. Right. He wants your cup to run over. Yes. He wants that for you. But how does he want you to do it? He doesn't want you to sit there and try and make it happen. He wants you to be in unity with him. To be in servitude with him. And then things begin to happen. Yes. Because God commands a blessing. Even life forevermore. At Jesus' feet, he commands a blessing over us. He commands a blessing. Proof is in the pudding. Because the blessing that he commanded on this woman, he commanded a blessing, a high blessing. Yes, amen. The only thing that Jesus said has to be preached everywhere is the story of this woman. Amen. Uh -huh. Jesus said that. I didn't say that. Jesus said it will go down in history uh -huh. that wherever the gospel is preached, mm -hmm. this woman will be mentioned. Amen. Yeah. God didn't say that about Moses. He didn't say it about Abraham. He didn't say it about Joshua or David. He didn't say it about Peter or Paul. He didn't say it about any of the apostles. He didn't say it about... He said it about one woman who was on the floor for more. One woman that we don't even know her name. But he said, she will go down in history that wherever I am presented, she will be remembered. That is a blessing that lasts your whole life long. I want that kind of blessing. I don't want a blessing of a new job or a new wife, or a new whatever, or better kids. I want a blessing that goes beyond all that. And God is the only one who can command it in your life. Yes. Yes. When you get to His feet, and you get united with Him, He begins to command blessings over you that are far beyond what you could ever imagine. And it's not because you deserve it, it's because of his great love for you. And the fact that your approach to him was full of freedom. Freedom to be who you are. Freedom to worship him like you want to worship him. 
Amen. And finally, freedom to get up with a blessing in your pocket. To say, this is with me. This is going with me, not just, it ain't going to stop once I die. It's going forever. This woman's blessing is still in effect. That's amazing. Sister, will you come play me some music? I've got water up here and didn't drink it. I want God to command blessings in your life. I want God to make your cup overflow. With blessings that go beyond just the material the materialism of this world. But it does so much more for your whole family. For your whole bloodline. That God can command a blessing. I'm, I'm reaping that. I'm reaping that. My dad told me a story. Let me tell you a story. This is kind of funny. But my dad told me when I was young. Because... I was one of those kids that was like, why do we always got to go to church? Where are we, do we go to church more times than anybody? So I was a pastor's kid. We were there every, every day it seemed like we were at the church. Right? right? Sunday morning, Sunday night, Wednesday night, Tuesday night prayer meeting, Thursday night, you know, youth meeting, whatever it was, choir practice. We had to go to everything. And I was like, why do we got to do this so much, Dad? Amen? I'm stepping on toes, I can feel it. <laughs> Why do we got to do this so many times? He told me, he said, let me tell you how, he gave me a, a little story, he said, let me tell you how all this is why we go to church. And he started way, way back, he said, my, I think he said great, great, I don't know, don't quote me on that, but one of our ancestors in West Virginia, he said, when he was doing his thing, he was an open warlock. If you don't know what a warlock is, it's like a male witch. And he said his claim to fame was is he would go around and he would curse people's cows. And they wouldn't give milk. Now you say, well, that's kind of crazy. No, not back in his day that he lived. If your cow stopped giving milk, you ran up hurt. You're hurting. Because a cow wasn't something you just go down the road and buy. And it wasn't to the time where milk was just everywhere available. He said, so he would go around and he would use witchcraft, he would curse people's cows and they would stop giving milk or they would die. And he was known as a big warlock. Yeah. That's in my family tree. He said, but one day your grandmother decided, I'm going to go to church. And I'm going to go to church. And she got, got into church and she got saved at a little old church of God. And her husband got saved, and he became a preacher of the gospel. And they had a little boy, and he was a preacher. And then they had a little boy, and he was a preacher. And my dad became a minister. And lo and behold, at the time, I wasn't a minister, but he's like, you know what? Now I can testify, I'm a minister. It changed the whole dynamic of our tree. It changed the whole flow of our family. Why? Because one person said, I'll go to his feet. One person said, I'll go cry out. One person said, I'll go and I'll lay down and I'll seek Jesus. And it changed the whole dynamic. I'm living a life right now that I'm, I think I'm like sixth, fifth generation. My children are sixth generation of being in the gospel and being in the house of God. That is an amazing testimony. I don't say it to brag. I'm just telling you, God can change your whole dynamic. God can do it. All it takes is for you to get to his feet. And the blessing your family can reap won't just die when the loved ones die. It'll keep on going. Yeah. Hallelujah. I preach today not because I'm anointed, but because my family has been anointed. And that mantle has passed from decade to year to year to person. And I'm looking forward to whenever my time comes, that it'll pass to one of mine. Not because they have my last name, but because they get to a place where they're in unity with God. Yeah, that's it. So that the blessing can flow. Yeah. That's what I want for your life. That's what God wants for your life. Yeah. So with every head bowed and every eye closed, no one looking around. I want to ask you this morning. Is there something you need to pour out? Are you holding on to a hurt? Are you holding on to a pain or struggle? An issue? What's that thing that you cry about in private that you don't let nobody else see? 
What's that thing you never talk about because it's just too hard to talk about? You need to stop holding on to it and you need to take it to the Lord's feet. And you need to just let it all out however you want to. If it's through tears, that's fine. But if it's just through communication, you need to tell the Lord. You need to speak it and say, tell the Lord, Lord, I don't want this anymore. I'm tired of dealing with this. I'm tired of struggling with this. I'm tired of the wound and the pain and the hurt. And you can finally have freedom this morning to actually let it go and give it to Him. Amen. But maybe you say, Pastor, I've already been there. I've done that. Well, maybe you just stuck on the second step. Maybe you've been like, man, I want to really just let go and worship God. I really want to just get over that thing of people seeing me. And I really wish I could just let go and give God my best. You can do that this morning too. And you say, well, Pastor, I'm already there too. And let's get to the third part. Are you in unity with God? Are you anointed? If you want anointing in your life, if you want the anointing of God, like I said before, it doesn't come with oil. It doesn't come with man-made things. It comes when your heart is unified with God's. Jesus prayed it this way before he went to the cross. He said, Father, I have a request. That me and them, talking about us, would be one as you and I, Father, are one. That's unity. That's anointing. That's anointing. Jesus was known as the Messiah, which is the anointed one, meaning above all. And we talk about anointed, but he, that's what the Messiah was. The one who's in perfect unity with the Father, the anointed one, the Messiah. He said, God, I want us, my bride, my church, to be one the same way you and I, Father, are one. He was praying for anointing. I want them to be anointed as I'm anointed. Jesus said it often. They asked him, what are you doing here? Why don't you do this? Why don't you do this? And he said, I came to do what the Father has asked me to do. He said, that's the one thing I came to do is to tell you what the Father is. He was anointed above any man without measure. Amen. And I feel the Lord in this place. If you're here at any one of those three, you don't have to let me know. It's not about me. It's about you and God right now. If you're one of those three and you say, yeah, but you could be all three, that's okay too. If you're here and say, Pastor, you're talking to me. I feel it in my heart. I feel the Spirit giving me that urge as you're talking to me. And this one's for me. Then I want you to do something for me. I just want you to step out where you are and make your way down here. Don't be ashamed. Don't be bashful. Just like that woman walked into the middle of the presence of those Pharisees. She had the boldness to say, I'm here because I got to spend time at the feet of Jesus. I got to get here because I got to pour out adoration. I got to pour out hurt. I got to pour out pain. I got to get in unity with the Father. I've got to get on the same page. Hallelujah. Thank you for those that came. So can some of you brothers come up and help me pray? I want to pray for you this morning. On the floor for more. On the floor for more what you need. And